I, I think it's appro appropriate that Trafalgar School was here because I wanted to start off by saying that my earliest memories of my boyhood were of dreaming of going to wonderful places on this planet. And the three places that I wanted to go more than anything else were to see the great herds of wildebeest on the Serengeti Plains, to see uh, a duck-billed platypus, that was my great dream in uh, Kate's country of Australia, and to see the great flocks of parrots and snakes and butterflies in the Amazon jungle. And I've been privileged to have visited all three of these places in my adulthood. And the surprising thing to me in each place was that in each of these areas of the world, the dominant species that was everywhere around was us. I first visited the Amazon in 1988 when the Nature of Things was doing a two-hour special called The Road to the End of the Forest. And I arrived in Rondonia in a city called Porto Velho in the middle of the day and you could look straight at the sun because it was covered by smoke. The crew that I met up with, the, the uh, camera crew that I met up with, had been grounded for three days because planes couldn't fly because of all of the smoke. And of course, the smoke was coming from the burning of the Amazon forest. Everywhere we went and flew, roads cut red gashes through the green canopy. Everywhere we went, we could see great rents in the forest as the gold miners rushed in and, and uh, trashed the areas and, and cleaned out the rivers, uh, well, po polluted the rivers. And everywhere, of course, the fires burned. The Amazon rainforest during the burning se season is literally on fire. And I'm, in the many trips that I've gone back down to Brazil in, I've met numerous Brazilians who say to me, is it true that in North America, you've already cut down most of your forests? Isn't it true that the forests that remain in North America are still under attack and people want to destroy them? And you're now coming down to us, where over 80% of the Amazon rainforest is still intact, and you're coming down to tell us not to do what you've already done and continue to do? And of course, they are absolutely right. And when Payakan, a, a great leader of the Kayopo people, came to Vancouver to stay with us, we took him all over British Columbia to show him the clear cuts that were going on on Vancouver Island and on, in the main part of British Columbia. And we saw the great burning of slash piles all over the, uh, the province. And he looked at them in amazement and he said, you know, Brazilians destroy the forest because they are poor and they are un uneducated. And he said, what are Canadians' excuses? <laughs>